Detroit Red Wings this year because I actually feel like they might be kind of sweet. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they're definitely going to be better than they were last year. You see a lot of the things do. We got the new coach, obviously, in Lalonde. We're going to see how that works out. He is a first-time head coach. He's coming from a great organization in Tampa Bay. Stevie, Bay, Stevie Y handpicked him to lead this team, lead these young guys. But the things that Stevie Y did in free agency cannot be understated. He brought in legitimate NHL players. You bring in Andrew Cobb. You bring in David Perron. You bring in Dominic Kubliak, Ben Sherratt, Ole Mata. These are guys that are rotation pieces. These are guys that are supposed to be on NHL rosters. So your rookies, your young guys... Don't have to overexert themselves. Try to do too much. To go out there and be a second liner, Philip Zadina. Go out there and be something that you're not supposed to be. So now Philip Zadina falls down to the third line. It's going to make it a lot easier for him. Some of that pressure is going to be taken off of him. When you have a third liner scoring 20 goals a year, it makes it a lot easier. You look at what they did. Like I said, they added legitimate NHL players, and these are not the Johansons. These are not the Mike Madonos. These are not guys that are 40 years old, falling apart, not going to make an impact. These are guys that will come in here and make an immediate impact on this team. These are guys that will come in here and play big time minutes, both in regular five on five and in power play and penalty kill situations. That is really a big sell to this year's Red Wings team. Also, you look at the youth movement and what's going on. Yeah. We already know what we have with Raymond and Sider. You have guys like Bergeron and Edmondson who you're hoping to see on this team at some point this year. And then you probably have the biggest unicorn in the NHL in Elmer Solderbloom. That's you look at this guy. Yeah. He is 6'8". He is 250. He's a forward. He skates fantastically. He's actually got some mitts. Like, he's not just a guy that you're going to put out there, screen the goalie, try to get some tip-ins, just be a big body, power forward. Like, he's got finesse. He's got skill to his game. So you, you're hoping that guy makes his way up to this to this team at some point this year. They gave him a lot of PT in their last game against the Blackhawks. Unfortunately, we lost that game. But it still looked good. What he does out there is shocking. He gets every 50-50 puck because he just reaches around guys because he has a length advantage. He has a oh yeah, pause. He, he's got a length. <laughs> Why he's got like a this? length advantage. He's got a height advantage. But I, I'm very excited for this team mainly because of what I said originally. You bring in these free agents. You bring in guys that will make a difference. Not only in five-on-five -five hockey, but in the special teams where the Red Wings were severely lacking last year. The penalty kill was 6-for-6 six six in their first preseason game. I understand it's preseason, but that is still very impressive to see. Like, David Perron is going to be very good, a very good addition to those power play units. I'm excited for this Red Wings team. Stevie rebuilt this roster, revamped this roster, not just by pulling guys up from Grand Rapids, but going out there and getting actual, legitimate, solidified NHL pieces. Like, Kubliak had two goals last night against, or he had one goal last night against Chicago. Or, no, I'm sorry. He had two goals against Pittsburgh in the first preseason game. Yeah. Adam Ernie, you know, had ah. two goals last night. Ernie is going to be a fourth liner on this team. Like, the, these are guys that you expect to go out there, make some plays. You expect these guys that Stevie Y brought in to be exciting, to be presence, presences in that locker room. So I, I'm excited for it. I'm really excited to see not only what Derek Lalonde can do, but what this injection of legitimate NHL talent into a roster that was already littered with good up-and-coming young players can result in. See, man, you got me so. Yeah. Honestly, like all that stuff. And then like last year, what Kubelik, honestly drew me in sorry. was like hearing all the hype about this guy, uh, Solder Bloom, the... Look how big this guy is on skates. Oh, he's sniping somebody this, for yeah. sure. Yeah, this this is Danielle Bruce and the next to this guy on skates. He looks like a monster. Yeah. I, and I, what happened though for me though is I, you know, we talked about in BDE. I had to do my, a little bit of my homework for it, so I actually ended up like watching like tape on this guy, being like a novice to hockey. This is how I became the Swedish scout. And I'm, I'm watching this kid, and like you said, Spinny, like it's not like he's like a a big bruiser or anything like that. This guy's got some finesse to him. Yes. And as a novice of hockey, I'm watching this and like seeing it on the screen. And then top of like. If you guys never seen NHL playoff hockey, it's there's nothing. I mean, MMA I'd put up there, but I'm also biased in that aspect. But team sport wise, NFL playoffs, 
NHL playoffs, probably even more so. Just so damn intense, so damn physical. It's everything you like. American sports, football is number one because of like the physicality and stuff like that. Hockey brings that to you. Now there's like the little like nuances you have to learn, like icing, which I feel like is kind of like a judgment call. Sometimes it seems like. Uh, well, they they changed the rule. I mean, it's not really a judgment call, but they changed the rule on it a couple years back to where the defender can't just like stop skating for the yeah. puck to get into the restriction zone. He actually has to try to keep going yeah. to get it. So if the defender like pulls up and he's just like lollygagging it to get to the puck, then they won't call the icing. Sold the bloom. Yeah, sold the bomb, the quantum of the Wolver Sports chat. I'm just letting you guys know because I, I, I want to start talking Red Wings because I feel like they're, they're on the up and up. Obviously, all of Detroit sports has been on the low. And I feel like they're going to be the quickest to make the turnaround. Last year, you saw them in a couple wild card graphics. Obviously, they didn't belong in those wild card graphics. But we did, Stevie White did a little Salt Bay action here and added some vets. And, and another gentleman, who's the big bruiser guy we've got that people are kind of mad about because he's old? But ben like, Schrapp. Yeah, Ben Schrapp. But wasn't there like a playoff contender like traded like two first round, or second round? Or like they gave him a lot of capital to get him on their team before like the playoffs. Yeah. Which obviously he's, you know, they, they want him. You know what I'm saying? He's like the John Kaminsky type. But. Sam, are you a big hockey guy? I mean, I'm not as big of a hockey guy as I am other sports, but I still love me some hockey. And this Red Wings team, I don't know, it's got me pretty excited because you got young guys. You got guys that Stevie Y drafted, like Mo Sider, who's trending upwards into being one of the best defensemen in the NHL. You got Lucas Raymond, who I believe can take the leap into becoming a 30-goal guy next season. You even got Simon Edvinson. He's he was a guy that uh, on the de- a defenseman who I hope to see in the NHL by the end of the year. And of course, you got Jakob Varana, who, if he plays a full season, I'm expecting him to lead the team in goals. And that doesn't even include Dylan Larkin, who's coming off of arguably his best season. Tyler Bertuzzi, who is unequivocally coming <laughs> off of his best season. You've got. You added free agents like Ben Sherratt, who can help out the defensive depth. You've got Andrew Kopp, who is a legitimate second-line center, who wins face-offs, who went to New York last season and was a pivotal member of that of that team that went really far in the playoffs. He was a more than a point-a-game guy. And you got Dominique Kubalik, Kubalik, who had a damn good rookie year for the Blackhawks, but kind of fell off. But maybe that's because he was in that rat-ass Chicago Blackhawks culture <laughs> and then coming to a good culture that has a new coach, that has Stevie Y, one of the best GMs in the NHL and is ours. And I think that he could really too, thrive. So, you got the storyline with it, too. You got Stevie Y returning back to his, you know what I'm saying, hockey town, mm-hmm. the place Dude. he helped build to like do this as well. Like. I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be like a 30 for 30 one day. And Soder Bloom, like. what if he becomes something? The freak, the 6'8", 250 forward. 100%. He was not a high draft pick. He was drafted 159th overall. If he actually becomes what you know, you two think he could be, and maybe I think he could be, and what we have expectations for him as, that is... That's worse. That's like better than a steal. That's highway robbery. That's like a million dollar heist type of thing. So, this Red Wings team, I'm pretty excited. There's a word that starts with a P that I'm having dreams of it. Is it going to happen? I'm not going to say it yet, but. People's. Uh-oh. Organs like Jeffrey Dahmer. Is that what you're talking <laughs> People's about? People's organs, dreams? absolutely. You, you, Sounds you, oddly familiar. You got it, but. The Red Wings, of all the teams in Detroit, I think they're the one that's going to turn it around the fastest, and they're the one that's trending yes. the highest upwards with how well Stevie Y has drafted and the free agents he brought in that were relatively cheap. I'm excited about this Red Wings season, like giddy. 100%. And like, there's one difference, too. As much as like we believe in Troy Weaver, as much as we're hyped about Brad Holmes, Stevie Y's done it. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's quite literally built a championship team and also participated in winning a couple himself. What were you laughing about earlier, Spinny? No, the guy is getting his hair cut like soft, so he's like leaning back. He's like, yeah, I'm in there. <laughs> he's getting, getting his camera time. That was pretty funny. <laughs> he's probably, probably looking back on the TV for other reasons. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. other view that goes along But with no, it. dude, I, I'm really excited for this Red Wings team. Like you said, you know, the prodigal son has returned and Steve Eisenman to lead this team. And we talk, we talk about, uh, we talk about, you know, Troy Weaver coming in, fixing the Pistons. We talk about what Brad Holmes is doing with the Lions, but Steve Eiserman has done it before. He built a juggernaut that won multiple Stanley Cups. Like, and that's what he's coming back to do to the Red Wings. You love to see it. The guy has been on fire not only drafting, but this was his first year where he sunk his teeth in a free agency. And like I said, these guys that he added 
take so much off of the rookies and off of the young guys that they can go out there, they can learn, they can adapt, they can grow while they have these legitimate NHL players doing things for them, doing the, doing the dirty work, doing things that win games. So I, I'm really excited for it.